Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And please look in the description beneath this video for useful links to other videos and resources to help you learn chemistry. For today's video, I'm going to teach you how to answer the question shown here. I invite you to pause the video right now and try this question on your own first, then hit play and I'll show you how to do it. Now using principles that I've taught you in another video, linked to in the description below, we're going to dissect this equation and answer our question. <laughs> Now, first step in this whole process is figuring out who gets oxidized and who gets reduced. To do that, we need to identify the oxidation numbers of everything on the board, or at least as many as is necessary. According to our rules right here, anytime you have an atom that's all by itself with no charge, its oxidation number is zero, and that applies to our copper right here. In contrast, anytime you have oxygen, if it's oxygen all by itself with zero charge, as in molecular O2, its oxidation number is also zero. If it's oxygen in peroxides, such as hydrogen peroxide H2O2, its number is negative one, and everywhere else oxygen is negative two, and that will apply to the oxygen over here in nitrogen monoxide. Now for hydrogen. As before, anytime you have hydrogen all by itself with no charge, as in molecular H2, its oxidation number is zero, just like everybody else. Separate from that, whenever hydrogen is bonded to non-metals, its oxidation number is plus one, and whenever bonded to metals, it's minus one. Most of the time in freshman college chemistry, you'll see hydrogen bonded to non-metals, as is the case right here. The oxygen here, of course, is also going to be negative two, like the oxygen on the other side. Now, in order to identify the oxidation numbers or charges of all of the other elements, we need to back calculate them from the things that they're bonded to. Key to this is the rule shown right here, that whenever you add up all the oxidation numbers slash charges for all the atoms in a formula, that sum must be equal to the overall charge of that formula. For example, there is zero charge over here in this nitrogen monoxide, or no, no charge, get it? <laughs> Therefore, nitrogen's charge here, or oxidation number, must be plus two to countervail the effect of that minus two on the oxygen. Make sense? Now, for this molecule, it's gonna be a little more complicated. I've got three oxygens, each with a negative two charge. Collectively, then, their total charge will be negative two times three, or negative six. Hydrogen, I can just bring down because there's only one hydrogen. The overall charge for this nitric acid is zero because there's no number written there. So the number that goes in here for the nitrogen must be such that when added to plus one and minus six leaves behind zero. Something plus one minus six is zero. That something is of course plus five. To go backwards to the individual nitrogen's oxidation number, I just divide that plus five by the total number of nitrogens in this formula, which is of course just one. And that gives me a plus five oxidation number for my nitrogen. Now for the substance over here, you could, if you wished, extract out the nitrogen and oxygen atoms and go through the entire rigmarole of identifying their oxidation numbers. Or you could just remember that nitrate is one of the polyatomic ions that I require you, my students, to memorize, which has a charge of negative one. Thus, if I have nitrate here encased in parentheses with the two subscript, there are two nitrates in toto in that formula, each of which has a negative one charge. So what's the total charge ebbing off of both nitrates together? Yeah, it's negative one times two is negative two. So what charge must that copper have in order to countervail that negative two? Yeah, it must be plus two. And I think that's as deep as we need to go to identify all the oxidation numbers. Now let's see if we can determine who gets oxidized and who gets reduced in this reaction. In this reaction, my copper goes from zero over here to positive two. That's becoming more positive by losing electrons. So that is my Leo. In contrast, the nitrogen here goes from plus five over here to plus two. That's becoming less positive or more negative by gaining electrons. So that is my GER. We've now identified who gets oxidized, who gets reduced. So we're going to pull this reaction apart into two half reactions the reduction reaction here and the oxidation reaction here. In doing that, however, we have to be careful by also splitting apart all of the species, separating cation from anion that are aqueous. And although I left it off the board, the original problem told us that the nitric acid is aqueous because it's a strong acid, as is the copper nitrate. Thus, for the reduction, that is this GER half right here, I'm gonna pull out nitric acid, separating cation from anion because it was aqueous right there, and I'll do the same thing with the copper reaction. Now that we have these two half reactions, we'll go through very specific steps, again, linked to in the description below, and which I'm also gonna outline here. For this phase, then, we follow specific steps. Step one is we balance all of the elements that are not oxygen or hydrogen. In this half reaction up here, you can see that the only one that fits that description is nitrogen. One nitrogen on the left, one nitrogen on the right, so it's totally balanced. In the bottom reaction, it's copper, copper, totally balanced, atom for atom, so I'm done with that step. The next step is I balance oxygens by adding H2Os wherever is necessary. For this top reaction, you can see I have three oxygens on the left side of the equation and only one on the right. 
So I'm gonna have to add two H2Os to the right. For the bottom reaction, I have two multiplied through by three is six oxygen atoms on the right. To balance that, I'm gonna have to put six H2Os on the left, which takes me to the next step. I now have to balance hydrogen by adding H pluses wherever is necessary. In the top reaction, I have on the right side, two times two equals four hydrogens, and on the left, I only have one H plus, so I'm gonna have to add a four coefficient right there, which I think balances out my hydrogens. In the bottom reaction, I've got six multiplied by two is 12 hydrogens on the left and zero hydrogens on the right. So I'll balance that by adding 12 H pluses to the right. Now I hasten to mention that this step is a little bit different if you're doing this half reaction balancing under basic conditions as described in an earlier video that I have linked to in the description below. However, we're going to do this under acidic conditions and I always choose to do it that way unless I'm specifically told basic. That takes us to the next step, which is I balance out charges on each side of the half reaction by adding electrons wherever is necessary. On the top reaction, I have two zero charged or neutral species on the right. So my overall charge on the entire right side of the reaction is zero. On the left side, however, I've got four H pluses, which I'll just write down here, and I've got one nitrate, which has a minus one charge. So the overall charge on the left side of the reaction is four minus one equals plus three as it currently stands. In order to balance that, I have to add electrons, and I'm gonna have to do it on the left side. Adding three electrons then will give me a negative three thrown here in the addition mix. That will then give me an overall zero charge on the left. I now have charges balanced. Now at the bottom side, I've got all neutral here on the left. On the right then, I've got plus two copper, two nitrates, which are negative one apiece, so that's actually a negative two, and then I've got 12 H pluses. You add all of that together, you end up getting plus 12 overall as your charge for the right side. To balance that out, I'm going to have to add 12 electrons to the right. If you do that, then you end up with an overall zero charge on the right. So my charges are now balanced. Now the last step is we look at the total electron counts in the reduction and the oxidation and multiply each of them by whatever coefficient is necessary to make them equal. You can see, for example, that I have three electrons here, which does not match the 12 electrons down here in my oxidation. To make those equal, I think that if I multiply the entire top reaction by four, that will do the trick. That gives me matching numbers of electrons. Now, if I wanted to get a net reaction after all this process, I would just add the two together and cancel out like terms algebraically. In any event, this is the overall process in which you can see the total number of electrons transferred is 12 once you're all balanced, which is option D. Yeah. <laughs>